All right, friend, you are well on your way with intermittent fasting, and today's video is exciting. We're going to be talking about the three-prong approach that you can take during these longer fasting and longer eating windows to set yourself up for success in the future. I have three amazing tips to share with you, so let's get into it. All right, friends, how's the first day of your 12-hour fast going? Did you make it all 12 hours without another snack or meal? If you did, that's awesome. You needed a little nibble of something to get through those 12 hours, or you had to open your eating window a little early. That's okay too. We have all been there, and it does get easier the more you do it. For today's lesson, we're discussing the top three habits you need to start now to make fasting easy and effortless. And what I mean by start now is practice these habits today when you have a more relaxed, longer eating window. That's the best time to do this work because you're going to be laying the foundation for better fasting down the line. These three tips will set you up for success as you start to adjust and lengthen your fasting window. So you want to be ready for an easy transition. And today's tips will help ensure that it's super seamless. So in this lesson, you're going to learn the exact things you need to do today to make longer fasts even easier. You're going to learn how to make small changes stick so they become lasting habits and why this three-prong approach is your secret weapon for fasting success. So an overview of the three habits for an easy and effortless fast, we're going to be diving into all things sugar, hydration, and meals. So starting with sugar, tip number one, reduce your sugar intake. Sugar is a key contributor to hunger and cravings, and it's so sneaky. It's in almost everything, including foods like ketchup, salad dressing, even pasta sauce, and canned soup. If you're prone to cravings or have a strong sweet tooth, take the time during your longer eating windows to focus on reducing your sugar intake. Start small. Read the labels. Check nutrition facts. Look at the ingredient lists. Start with your favorite foods and really scrutinize what's in them. Then if it's got sugar in it, try to reduce or minimize it, even eliminate it altogether. It can be something as simple as using less sugar in your coffee. If you drink tea, maybe you use less honey or switch to something like agave. Ask for fewer pumps of any sugary flavorings or even skip the sugared flavorings altogether. It's also a good idea to be aware of the amount of sugar you consume throughout the day, just to have a baseline idea. If you drink soda or if you have chocolate or dessert after meals, think about the sugar content in those items as well. The goal is to slowly reduce the amount of sugar you're eating because minimizing sugar intake now will help with cravings and hunger later especially as you start to lengthen your fasting windows. And for reference, on a label or a nutrition fact, every four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon of sugar. And so one teaspoon is about one normal white packet of sugar. So a quick note before we move on, I do not follow nor do I recommend a low carb or keto diet with intermittent fasting. So when I say low sugar, I don't mean completely cut out carbs. I don't mean completely remove all sugar from your life. I personally couldn't go the rest of my life saying no to dessert or skipping the bread basket at dinner. It's just not realistic, and I don't suggest it for you either. So tip number two, increase your hydration. A common complaint with fasting, especially as your fasts start to get longer, is headaches or feeling fatigued. But being adequately hydrated goes a long way to minimizing or even preventing headaches. During your 12-12 window, make sure you're hydrating enough, including electrolytes, to prevent headaches. Salt, in particular, plays a role in helping balance electrolytes. I like to add a pinch of Himalayan sea salt or Celtic sea salt into my water in the morning. You can also use regular old table salt. Go with what you've got. Don't make it more complicated. So it's super important to know how much water you need to be drinking to ensure you're hitting your goals. Because even without fasting, dehydration will lead to headaches. So luckily, it's super easy to calculate your baseline water intake. Just take your weight in pounds and divide it in half. And that's the number of ounces of water you should drink in a day. You always want to add more water if it's hot out, if you're sweating, or if you're working out. So for example, if you're a 150-pound person, half of 150 is 75. So you want to drink 75 ounces of water a day. Now if you're working out or sweating or it's hot outside, you want to add about 16 ounces of water or more to make sure you're staying hydrated. All right, once you've got your hydration goals, it's time to drink up. Try to drink multiple sips throughout the day and avoid chugging water right before bed to meet your hydration goals. If you do that, you'll end up waking up in the middle of the night for a quick trip to the bathroom. Tip three, experiment with meals. This one is important. All right, the type of food you break your fast with or the last meal you eat before you begin your fasting window can have a huge impact on both your hunger levels and your cravings. So composition counts. You need to pay attention to what's on your plate. For example, if you incorporate more protein in your diet, particularly in your later meals before you close your eating window and start your fasting, this will keep you feeling fuller for longer. This means you can more easily extend your fast into the next morning. If you think about the 
hormones associated with fasting, it makes sense that your first meal of the day and what you break your fast with also matters. In particular, it has to do with how the body responds to that food. So if you break your fast with a meal full of carbohydrates, this can cause a huge insulin spike, which will lead to lingering hunger and increased cravings throughout the day. Instead, the goal is to balance carbs with an accompanying protein or include fiber in your morning meal to slow those glucose spikes. The research proves that fiber and protein and a little fat can help slow blood sugar spikes. It's important to use these longer eating windows to experiment with your meals and what you're eating to see what leaves you feeling full for a while or what makes you really hungry shortly after you've even eaten. Take notes as you go so you can optimize your future meals too. All right, so there you have it, my top three super easy and effective tips that will set you up for success with intermittent fasting. They may seem like small habits, but together, they're a sharp three-prong approach that will make all future fasting even easier. So set yourself up for success as much as possible by incorporating these three tips as soon as possible. Start today. Make a few small tweaks and changes each day and see how you feel. Find the meals that keep you feeling full and identify which ones lead to cravings. The goal is to get your body primed and ready while fasting is easier so your transition to a longer fasting window in the very near future is effortless and seamless and your future self will thank you for it. Start implementing these changes today and calculate your baseline water intake to make sure you're hydrating enough. Get into the habit of reading ingredients and nutrition labels. And don't forget, Four grams of sugar is one teaspoon, just so you have a guideline. Keep track of your findings in a notebook or in the notes section on your phone, and be sure to share your experiences and your progress with us. There's no such thing as a silly question, and we're all here learning and growing together. So if you've got a fun or helpful tip or a question, be sure to share it. If it works for you, chances are it'll work for us. All right, so there you have it, my top three tips that you can start implementing now when your fasting window is short at 12 hours. These top tips will help you as you start to lengthen your fasting windows in the coming days and weeks, and they will help prevent things like headache, dehydration, even low energy. So I'm so excited to have shared these with you today. Please let me know if you found them helpful. As always, if you like my content, give it a thumbs up or subscribe. Until next time.